Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at gravitational potential energy. We are specifically going to be looking at the two different formulas that are used for gravitational potential energy and we are going to study when is suitable to use each formula. So stay tuned. I'm sure when most of us are introduced to the concept of gravitational potential energy, we are first introduced to E is equals to MGH. So let's look at that first. Let's say there is an object on the surface of the Earth. So let's say there is a ball on the surface of the Earth. There is a force acting on this ball and that is the force of gravity. Force of gravity exists between the ball and the Earth. And the force of gravity acting on the ball is downwards towards the Earth, towards the center of the Earth. When we raise the ball up a certain height, when we raise the ball up to height h, then there is a change in height of the ball, a positive change in height of delta h. And we see this change in height with the surface of the earth as the reference point. This is a key point in gravitational potential energy. There exists a reference point. And here when we use mgh, that reference point is the surface of the earth. Gravitational potential energy exists because of gravity and we can count the gain in gravitational potential energy of an object for example here when we raise the ball to a height of h we can count the gain in gravitational potential energy of this ball by calculating the work done on the ball the amount of work done on an object can be calculated by multiplying the force that is used to do the work on the object and the displacement of the object in the direction of the force so in this case, the force that is acting on this object, we are doing work against gravity. Gravity is the one pulling it downwards and we are lifting it up. That is in the direction of the force. And since the direction of gravity is vertical, it's downwards, relatively vertical, of course, it's towards the center of the Earth. And when we lift it up, then we take the vertical height h as the displacement of this ball. So this is how we get work done against gravity and this will result in a gain in gravitational potential energy of this ball. So when we substitute W, we substitute W equals to mg weight equals to the product of mass and gravitational acceleration. So this mg multiplied by delta H, the change in height, we get mg delta H. or simplified as mg H. Here, one key point to note is that whenever we use E is equals to mg H, we use 9.81 for the value of g and this is only true when the object is near the surface of the earth as the object moves further and further and further away from the earth the gravitational field is going to be weaker so the gravitational force of attraction is going to be weaker and g is going to drop so this is not true when the object for example is in space or is very very high up in the sky is very far from earth then g is no longer 9.81 so we can only use this formula potential energy is equals to mgh when we are doing calculations for objects that are close to the surface of the earth where the gravitational acceleration is constant or nearly constant so we already know the first problem of using this formula when we want to calculate the gravitational potential energy of objects that are far away from earth for example in space because we cannot use this value of g we cannot use this formula. It's not suitable to use this formula. And then there is another thing to take into account, and that is the zero point. Now let me show you why zero point is relative. Let's say the object is on the Earth. Then according to our definition here, because this is our zero point on the surface of the Earth, we say the gravitational potential energy of this ball lying on the surface of the Earth is zero. But what happens if I dig a hole under the ball? If the ball has no gravitational potential energy, then it will have no energy to move downwards. But of course, if I dig a hole under the ball, the ball is going to fall into the hole. This example, you can clearly see that this zero line is just something that we set on our own. It's relative. It's arbitrary. Sometimes we may not even be looking at the gravitational potential energy of an object relative to the Earth. We could be looking at the gravitational potential energy of an object relative to the Moon or to another planet or to the sun or to another star. So when we do calculations in space, then it no longer makes sense to use the surface of the earth as the zero line. And so we need to find a new suitable zero line. And this is where our next formula comes in.
this is the formula for gravity according to Newton's universal law of gravitation. If you haven't seen my video on universal law of gravitation, the video link is at the corner. The force of gravity is equals to gmm over r square. M, the two m's represent the masses of the two bodies involved and r represents the distance between the two centers of the bodies. This is the formula for gravity. Now we are not looking at gravity here, we are looking at gravitational potential energy. But you can see that it is very similar. Our formula for gravitational potential energy is this. Negative gmm over r. So let's compare the difference here. The only difference is the negative sign in front. And instead of r square in the denominator, it is r. So minus gmm over r. Remember when we are using mgh, the zero line is set to the surface of the earth. That is our reference point. But when we are using this formula, the zero line is set at infinity. It is set at a place that is so far away, very, very extremely far away, infinity. Just think about this. Let's look at this formula here. If the distance of between the objects is infinity, it's infinitely far from one another, then here R will be infinity and the value of the gravitational potential energy will be zero. This is in line with the gravity formula as well. As objects move infinitely far from one another, the gravitational force between the object becomes zero. So at this point, the gravitational potential energy of the object at infinity, at an imaginary place that is very, very, very far away, if it is far enough, it is at infinity, then the potential energy, gravitational potential energy of the object will become zero. And this is where we set our zero point. So this is at infinity. So the highest value of gravitational potential energy is zero, according to this formula, by definition of this formula. This formula defines gravitational potential energy as the work done to bring an object from infinity to R. Don't worry too much about that definition, but you must know the reference point here. So if the highest value of the gravitational potential energy is zero, then anything below zero will be negative. This is why we have the negative sign here. Let's see how this makes sense. As the object becomes closer and closer to the larger mass, to the larger body, the gravitational potential energy is going to drop because it is going to become more and more negative. Remember, as it becomes more and more negative, it's going to become smaller and smaller. And this makes sense. Let's go back to the MGH example when we use the surface of the Earth as our reference. When we raise the ball up, actually, we are increasing the distance between the Earth and the ball, and the ball is going to gain gravitational potential energy. The further it is, the higher we lift it up, the higher the gravitational potential energy gained by the ball. So the further the objects, further two objects, the higher the gravitational potential energy. And this makes sense here as well. As we go further and further, it becomes less and less negative until it reaches zero. So the gravitational potential energy is going to be increasing. As it goes closer and closer, it's going to become more and more negative. Remember, this is zero. Anything below zero is negative. So as we go down, becomes more and more negative. So the gravitational potential energy is going to drop as the objects come closer together. So remember that even though the value itself can be negative, the change can be positive. For example, if we are moving from negative five to negative three, the change is positive two. So a change in energy can be positive. And when we are using the formula for energy in calculations, we are normally using it in context of the change in energy by conservation of energy. So as long as the energy at the beginning and energy at the end is the same, then it doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive here. The concept is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. This negative here exists because of our reference point. Again, when we are close to the surface of the earth, we can use mgh because g is assumed to be 9.81. We can use the value of 9.81 into the formula. It's very simple to use that formula. And our zero point is set to the surface of the Earth. However, when we use u is equals to minus gmm over r, then we are dealing with a distance that is much further than the surface of the Earth, where g is no longer constant at 9.81. And so we have to use the second version of the formula, the u version of the gravitational potential energy formula. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do hit the like button. It really does help to support my channel. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I will be posting a video at least once a week. I'll see you in the next video.